<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, people, have you ever experienced eerie silence, stairs, fairies, etc., in the woods slash forest? I live in the woods with my boyfriend. We have a couple indoor slash outdoor cats we allow to run free during the day, but I've trained them to return to the house with a long whistle followed by three short whistles that they equate with feeding time. One of the cats did not respond to my dinner whistle one night, so we decided to do a quick search of the area. She's not a long-range cat, so we think she might be stuck in a tree. I whistle until we finally get a response, though faint, she has a very distinctive cry, so we can pinpoint the general direction in which she is located. We're hiking for some time, growing disbelief that she's strayed so far when she stops responding to my whistles. All we hear is this eerie silence until I feel a pounding in my left ear. It's not exactly a ringing, but the sensation is similar to when a loud noise goes off and all you can hear is the subdued thud of your heart beating until your hearing returns to normal. Instead of returning to normal, however, the pounding became a buzz, which is unusual since it is the dead of winter and most of the winged insects like bees and wasps are in dipause, which is sort of like a hibernation state that helps them survive the cold temperature. I glance over at my boyfriend, and he is clearly experiencing something similar, pressing his fingers against his ears. We decide it will be best to search for her first thing in the morning and rush back home, where we find the damn cat by the front door, waiting patiently to be let in. We felt as if someone or something had mimicked her cry to lure us out there. Now we make sure both cats are inside before nightfall, just in case. I live in Michigan and am surrounded by woods to the north. I like going on two to three hour deep wood walks with my dog, there is no cell reception and no real signs of human life anywhere. I always have my pistol with me out there, and usually this ensures no uneasy feelings while out alone. Thinking back, there have been a few times where I've just started running like my life depended on it, and I really don't know why. I know well enough not to run away from wild animals and have drawn my weapon and stood ground a couple of times, thankfully to no bad outcomes, but there have definitely been times where. I just felt the need to get out of an area. On a side note, I've also overcome some uneasy feelings out in the wilderness by letting out some loud, aggressive howls and barks. Don't underestimate how sounding like a wild animal can make you feel a bit bolder out there. I used to go backpacking a bit, but one night in the Cahuta wilderness, Georgia, I got the terror, and it was so bad that I stopped backcountry camping altogether. It was night, naturally, and I suddenly woke up, and as you probably know, when you wake up while camping, your mind tries to justify it, but you're also sure there was something that woke you up, and you're desperately listening for the something while being as still and quiet as possible. I finally couldn't take it anymore and left the tent, built up the fire into a small blaze, and sat there, wide-eyed and terrified. It felt like I did not belong, and many things were watching me and reinforcing this feeling. The forest felt alive with ancient malice. A moth fluttered onto a tree near the fire, and I went to look at it. I swear to God, it was a death's head moth. It was unmistakable. They are not native to Georgia, so it sounds ridiculous, but I know what I saw. The next day, after a long night, the feeling of malice did not leave me. I still felt like something was watching me. We packed up and hiked out a full two days early. I was hanging around a small lakeside fire with my friends at night once, and suddenly one of us noticed a teenage kid standing next to a tree about 100 feet away. He was facing away from us, standing completely still, in a white t-shirt and khaki shorts. We were all immediately kind of freaked out and started yelling at him. He didn't move. One of my friends started climbing the rocks up to the tree line where he was, but it was too steep for him to get up. Kid turned his head to the right a little, but other than that, he did not move. It was totally unsettling, so we put out the fire and prepared to leave. As we were walking back through the woods to our cars, someone, assumedly the kid, followed us the entire way, throwing small rocks at us. We kept stopping and looking around for him, but every time we stopped, he stopped. I couldn't see or hear a single thing. Continued. Kept getting rocks thrown at us. I still don't know what the hell that was all about. My great-grandfather went to the forest to pick up some wood. He went there at night since it was illegal to take wood from the forest. By chance, he met another man from the village who was doing the same thing. They agreed to stick together. A little time passed when they saw a small billy goat. Its fur was black. My great-grandfather assumed that someone had lost it. They decided to take the billy goat with them in order to share its meat later. They put the billy goat in a sack, and then weird stuff started to happen. The sack became heavier and heavier, and they exchanged it often between them. At some point, the billy goat was so agitated that my great-grandfather said, take it easy, billy goat. 
The paranormal thing is that the goat repeated the same exact words in a weird voice. My great grandfather had a gun and shot the sack twice. There was nothing but thin air. They were convinced it was the devil since they had in mind to steal wood. Me and my friends went camping in this forest, miles from the nearest hint of civilization. We set up camp, lit a fire, and for a while, it was all chill. But then shit got weird. The forest went dead quiet. I mean, like the kind of quiet where you can hear your own heart beating in your chest. No wind, no critters, nothing. Then we heard footsteps, big, heavy ones, circling our camp. We yelled out, who's there? But all we got was more silence. And then came the creepiest ducking part, we heard a whisper. It was saying my name, L, but the voice was all wrong. You know how your voice sounds distorted when you're talking on a really shitty phone? Yeah, like that, but way creepier. We were too freaked out to stick around. We packed our shit faster than I've ever seen anyone pack and bolt. As we got in the car, this god-awful smell hit us, like something had died and was rotting right there. Could it have been a friend with a recording on their phone or something? I've always been really weirded out. So me and my stepdad are pretty cool. He's been in my family for about two years now, and he's told me a few stories that I'll always remember. He's a hunter, and he's always hunted with his family and friends from church. One weekend, he and some guys from church were hunting rabbits using dogs. While they were in the woods, they passed an abandoned barn, probably because there was a farm not far away. They kept going through some thick brush until it opened up to a less thick forest. In the trees, there were what seemed to be squirrel nests, but these were different. They were big enough for a person to lie down in. When they got here, the hunting dogs started barking and ran to the trees that held the nests, as if there was some kind of animal up there. My stepdad and the other men grabbed the dogs and kept walking because they figured it was just coons, and they were only after rabbits. They kept combing the woods, and the dogs jumped one rabbit, which one of the men shot. After he shot, however, one of the shells failed to eject, so he went back to the truck to fix the gun. As the rest were hunting, they heard a shot coming from the direction of the truck. They walked back, thinking he had shot another rabbit. When they started on their way back to the truck, they met the man walking through the woods to meet them. He told them how he had fixed the gun and sat down to eat some crackers he had bought at a gas station before the hunt. As he was eating, the shotgun went off, even though it was a couple feet away, laying on the bed of the truck. He also added that he clearly remembered the gun being on safety. After that incident, they quit the hunt. Before they left, one man brought up that he felt weird the whole time they were hunting, as if someone was watching them. The others said that they felt the same way, especially after they encountered the nests in the trees. My stepdad told me about where they were hunting, and I've been there before. What I can see from the road is thick, thick forest that is almost in the middle of nowhere, with that one farm and a cotton field. It makes me scared to go hunting by myself. I'm an avid hiker and hunter. I like to go into the woods for days at a time and camp, hunt, or fish. I went into the forest off the beaten path as per my usual mow and went searching for a nice place near a creek with plenty of room to set up camp. I had my survival gear, rifle, and camping supplies. My buddy was with me, but he wasn't around when I ran into whatever the hell it was. About three days in, we were sick of fish, so I went to grab some squirrels, seeing as how they were the only thing in season. I'm not going to BS you about hunting squirrels with a big ass gun, all I had was my dot .22 and my knife. I got about 30 minutes from camp, so I was well out of sight and earshot from my friend. I get to a nice wooded area and set up shop on a stump. The first sign something was up was that there was no sound. No squirrels, no birds. The second sign was the sky darkening. A big ducking storm blew in. If you live in Kentucky, you know the one. The big ducking lightning storm from a week or two back. This was my cue to duck off. I started the trek to camp. I was having a good time when I saw whatever it was. It was crawling low to the ground, about 100 yards ahead of me. My first thought was a bear, but cross country. One time a big ass storm rolled through while I was traveling over the top of a mountain in a national park in Ashington, DC my friends and I took shelter in a thick stand to wait out the rain. The roads we had biked up were cut into the mountain, with lots of sheer cliffs, rocks, and shit. Maybe 20 to 30 minutes into the wind, rain, and thunder, we hear some huge cracks and booms, and then this god-awful fluting slash flanged warbling screech. It didn't sound like a mountain lion or fox, I don't think falling rocks sound like that either. I'm sure it must have been some kind of animal, but SHT, man. I've had several encounters with shadow people before, but this time was different. So I live maybe a three minute walk across from a tiny state park. It's a cave with a forest surrounding it, and I like to walk it a lot. 
I've had a lot of experiences with many things there. But anyway, I've had experience with shadow people there, but they're never bad. They always just seem to watch. But it was a rainy day, so no one else was out on the trail. Just me. Anyway, I was listening to my adventuring playlist on my phone and just vibing, but then I got a chill. And maybe not a minute after, I saw a big black shadow of a guy just out of the corner of my eye. I ignored it, knowing they wouldn't do anything, but that's when it came towards me, and I ran. It kept following me through the trails until I was out of the forest. It really creeped me out because it was the only time I've seen someone angry or mean. No matter the research I've done, I've been unable to get any information on the creature that I think I saw several years ago, or at least that my mind wanted me to see. I was walking through a forest at dusk, in Santa Cruz, California, and following behind me was a large creature, probably around 8 feet tall or so. It had broad, very square shoulders, and walked on two legs. It had a square-shaped head, two eyes, and long antlers. Because it was dark, I was unable to make out any distinct, specific features of its face, though from what I could see, its face may have resembled that of a deer. It had long arms that hung down almost to its knees, and it walked in a slow, lumbering way. Its entire body seemed like a cross between a tree and a deer, in regards to what I could make out of its skin or flesh covering. The reason I want to gain more information about this creature is that I think it may be a spirit, or perhaps a creature that can shift shapes. I tried gaining information on this being, but no one took me seriously. I drive alone past this forest, but for some unholy reason, something without the voice of humans, just like the voice in my thoughts, calls me in. I'm a scared person, and I would never ever go into this woods just because this random suggestion popped up. And never have I ever had such invitations. But the more I looked at this forest, which didn't happen with other forests, the more I felt calm and almost hypnotized, like a calm lullaby wanted me to come closer. I felt like if I went there, there would be absolute freedom, calmness, and something mysterious, and that everything in the world was not so important as to go there and enjoy the numbing silent lullaby that played in my head when I just looked at this forest. Something gave me the feeling that I belong here and I should forget everything else. My mistake was that I thought I could just chill in the forest and nothing bad would happen, and I got to enjoy the hypnotizing calm feeling. I thought I could outsmart this invitation. I was just too curious. But then something was not happy with my decision to stay out of the forest, and... I kid you not, you knocked me invisibly over. I was sitting, and there was no way I would just flip over and fall one meter. I understood that in this moment I needed to nope out and never come back to this place. Something just knocked me to the ground. I couldn't fathom what happened to me, even a long time later. There was just no chance. I just fell by myself when I was absolutely stable and calm. I just fled the scene without a second thought in the same moment. My senses kicked in. Who knows what would have happened if I got inside. Thank God, nothing serious happened. I am from the mountains of Scandinavia, and ever since I was a child, I have, now and again, heard voices in the forests. You barely hear what they say, but they are definitely there. And it's never just one voice, but several. I never told my parents about this, since I was afraid they would think I was crazy. So, when I was about 14, me and my family went hiking deep into the mountains. The mountains in that area are bare, except for this one part that is covered with mountain birches, probably because a huge river passes through there. So we set up tents there, in that wood next to the river. My dad and I go fishing, and the voices start. Louder this time. I ignore them, but then my dad turns to me, smiles, and says, you hear them too, don't you? Speaking to my dad about this in later years, we have no clear answer to what this could possibly be. I mean, it was not the river. There was no one but us out there. What the duck was it? I mean, sure, I could go immediately to different entities, but the only ones locale to us that have the whisper are either the Huldra slash Skogsra or fairies. But the Huldra travel alone, never in packs. Or it would be fairies, and if it were fairies, we would be dead. Fairies are very nasty in Scandinavian folklore, besides, fairies usually never make it that far into the mountains. I don't really believe in humanoids or entities, so I am just mentioning them now because it is even unlikely for a fictional entity to do the whole whisper in the forest. My grandmother lived in a small village and was working as a postwoman. Her job allowed her to meet and talk with old people at the time who told her some spooky, supposedly true stories about the area or people living there. Being a postwoman also meant that she had to travel quite a bit to deliver mail, as there were fields, forests, and some people who lived further from the center of the village. During spring, summer, and autumn, when the roads were good, she used her bike. And when it was winter or very muddy, she took her horse with a wagon. 
This happened in the winter or late autumn because she took her horse. As I mentioned, some people lived quite further, so she had to cross a forest in order to deliver some mail. As she was going back, she took another route in that forest, and somehow she ended up going in circles. She recalled that old folks told her a story about once there was a mansion that sank into the ground instantly during a wedding feast, and only a priest managed to escape, everyone else went to the ground with the house. Supposedly years passed and forest took over the place, but somehow it remained sinister. My grandmother figured that it must be the same cursed place. She heard that whoever walks into its territory ends up going in circles. She spent the better half of the day trying to get out of it, but no matter where she turned, she ended up going in circles. Round and round she went, not being able to escape. Then, as she got tired, she gave up and spoke to her horse. She asked him to take her home and release the reins, thus giving her horse total control and freedom. That horse brought her home. It turns out she spent a good five to eight hours there because it was already night when she returned. To this day, she can't explain what happened. That accident occurred after years of work, and she was born in that village, so she knew the place pretty well. I lived in rural Maine, and my neighborhood was surrounded by thick pine forests for miles on end. A short way away from my house, there was a big lake, and you could walk there through the woods behind my house. It was a short walk, and me and my dad would often go fishing there. As it was calming and our neighborhood didn't have any kids in it, I had to find entertainment some other way. This time we were packing up after we called it quits, and my dad began walking back to the house as he often did while I was packing up my fishing gear. It was evening and the sky was beginning to get darker and I remember the forest being a deep red-orange from the evening light. With me was my family's great big husky mix, Yukon, who was wandering around me. I eventually packed up all my stuff, picked up my fishing rod and tackle box, and began walking back to the house. Yukon followed close behind me, sometimes stopping to sniff at rotting logs or stumps, his footsteps were never too far. Once the sun fell below the horizon, though, he never strayed far. The forest was now only black, with the only light coming from the clip-on light fastened to my baseball cap. Everything was black and white while it was illuminated by my cap light, the trees were thin and gray, while the space behind them was inky black. I felt fine, as I had walked this way dozens of times at night. I remember Yukon stopping and whining at something and me turning around to see what was the matter. He was nervously glancing around, his neck fur bristling and his ears perking up. He was a big dog, at least 80 pounds, and my father always insisted that he was part wolf. It was unusual for him to be nervous like this. I looked up into the woods behind me and suddenly I was overcome with dread. I had never felt this feeling before, and to this day, I have never felt it since. It wasn't just fear, it was full-on, primal, fight or flight. If I don't leave right now, I will surely be dead in a few seconds. I booked it down the trail towards my house, with Yukon close behind. I soon broke out of the trees into my backyard, shooting up the gentle hill, throwing open my back door, and slamming it shut behind me. I was breathing heavily, and Yukon was panting quickly. My dad was sitting on the couch, looking dumbfounded at me. I explained everything, and he laughed, claiming there were some eerie things going on in those woods. I never believed him, but I still can't find out what caused me to run like that because when I looked behind me, all I could see were the pine trees, pale in the beam of my cap light. As a kid, 11 years old, I was once in the forest looking for lost things. Then I came across a small pond, a really small pool, in the forest. A woman was standing in the water. The water was reaching her knees. She was looking in the other direction, and I could not see her face. She had white hair and some old-looking clothes, they looked extremely old-fashioned. She did not turn to me, and she did not move at all, but I could see her breathing. I came closer, and then she left the water and stood on the forest ground. As she was raising her feet from the water, I saw that her feet were reversed. I mean, the toes and heels were reversed. I was shocked and frozen, but I freaked out and did turn around and begin to run. While running, I turned back and could see her face now. She was looking at me with an evil grin and an extremely pale face. I went home and told the story to my parents, and they did not believe me. I have never forgotten this encounter and want to ask if you have ever heard of people having reversed feet. I used to take my dog running in a pine forest not far from where I lived at the time. I got out of work early one day, so I figured I had plenty of time to run him before we lost daylight. We set off, and I don't think I'd gone a hundred meters before the feeling came on. I was prickly and uneasy, and there was a sense that I was being observed. I was so uncomfortable that I took my headphones out, I didn't want to be deprived of my hearing right then. I tried to shake it off, and we kept going, but he kept trying to pull me into the trees. 
We were running on the big roads that the logging trucks used, and I'd run this forest many times before, but we got turned around before long, and I was totally lost. I kept running, and all the while this feeling grew stronger and stronger, and I felt this great fear grip my chest. After a few more minutes, he stopped and planted himself on the ground and refused to move, and that's when I noticed all the sound had gone away. I called out to him to keep going, and it's like the trees just ate my words, they didn't go anywhere. It got dark soon after that, earlier than I expected, but I eventually found a road that looked familiar, and we followed it back to the car. So it was largely uneventful, but I've never felt so threatened before. It was overwhelming, and I felt certain that there would be some sort of confrontation before I got out, but it never happened. I've been back since and never experienced anything like that again. Further to that, my mother later told me that the night this happened, my special needs sister had prayed, we are a religious family, that I would be protected from the black spots in the forest. At the time, I'd told no one about it. I've since discovered the work of David Paulide and learned that young men and their canines are one of the main demographics that goes missing. I'm still trying to make sense of it now. I've been in the woods my whole life, loved to go hiking alone, and lived in a tent for six weeks in the middle of the woods for a job. I love being alone in the forest. About a year ago, I decided to drive out along a familiar backroad road I know in western Massachusetts to explore the woods. I pulled along the way by a patch of forest I'd looked at once and always wanted to go back. I hopped the barrier and climbed down into this pocket of small waterfalls and heavy moss. It was beautiful, and I decided to follow the stream down to see where it led. Anyway, I was hiking down the stream when I started to feel my thoughts grow fuzzy. I then felt myself walk through something. I don't know how to describe it, but it was like some sort of wall or barrier, and I suddenly felt like I was somewhere else. This part of the forest wasn't anything special either. There is no reason I should suspect something there. But I paused and noticed how spacey my body felt. Part of me wanted to move, but the main part of me was just, why bother? It didn't feel like time mattered anymore. I was just transfixed and watching my thoughts slow. I remember understanding that this was some particular place energetically, I didn't know what, but it didn't feel like the rest of the forest. I thought about sitting down and lying there next to the stream until nightfall. That's when an uncomfortable feeling started to grow in my chest. I started realizing that I felt both complacent and on edge from fear I couldn't even recognize, and that's when I heard a voice in my ear yell, run, now. I kind of woke up, and all of a sudden I felt intense panic. Trance broken. I bolted out of the woods faster than I've ever run. I gave a really weird sight to a passing motorist as they saw a small college girl bolt out of the woods, leap the barrier, jump into the car, and screech away much faster than any country road calls for. I'm an environmental educator at a nature preserve, so I spend a lot of time outdoors in sometimes isolated areas. There's one area where I try not to take groups of kids anymore. Once in a while we have to go through that trail since it's a shortcut to the kayak launch, and when it's 95 degrees outside, you're ready for anything that'll make your trip shorter. On one of my first days, I decided to trek through there. I got about a half mile in when I started to get some weird vibes. So I stopped dead in my tracks and let my mind go quiet, looking around carefully for any warning signs. There weren't any, and I didn't see any recent tracks, but the bad vibe was still there. I shrugged it off and kept going, the trail getting narrower. And the bad vibes kept growing deep in my gut. I felt I was being watched and followed. Now, this is an isolated area, so the possibility that a person was following me was remote but possible. I stopped every few meters, but there were no sounds. Actually, none at all, not even birds. I started to sweat, and my heart started to race. One thought kept echoing in my mind, you are not welcome here. You are not welcome here. Turn around. You are not welcome. Well, duck that, I thought. Just jittery from the nervous new job feeling, I thought. I came to a bend in the trail, and I stopped my feet would go no further. In my mind, the phrase got louder and louder, you are not welcome here. You are not welcome here. I heard a crash coming from behind me, but when I turned to investigate, there was no one. Not an animal, not a human, nothing. The vegetation was sparse enough that I would have been able to see something. I turned around and left. I put it down to nerves or me being a wimp or something and sort of forgot about it. About a month later, I'm taking a camp group to the kayak launch, where our kayaks await us. I decided to take the kids through the narrow trail to save us about 10 minutes. We get to the same bend of the trail, and the kids have gone silent. These are 9-year-olds in summer camp. They are not silent. They're never silent. I look behind me at one kid who looks as though he's scared shless. I don't like it here, he said. Why not? I asked. He looked me dead in the eye and said, 
I feel like we shouldn't be here. I couldn't turn around at that point, so we hustled to the kayak launch, and all was well, but we were all a little on edge. I took another group through the trail a week later, and again, the kids were silent at that bend in the trail. For that whole summer, whenever I took the shortcut, kids would get silent, and I'd get those bad vibes. I try not to go down that stretch of trail anymore if I can help it. Obviously, this is nothing more than a gut feeling on my end, but only a few other times in my life have I felt a gut feeling about a place that strongly. I don't know if it's the spirit of whatever was there or something else, and it's hard to describe, but it doesn't want people trespassing. As far as I know, it's never hurt anyone, but it seems to make everyone feel the same way, you're not welcome. A couple years ago, my girlfriend and I decided to make a two-week trip out to Washington State. We didn't plan anything out, we just figured it out along the way. We first visited Yakima, then traveled to Seattle, then went to Olympia, then Bremerton, then Forks, and ended up deciding to go to Ho Forest National Park. I don't want to drag on about everything we did before it happened because I don't find it applicable to the story. Anyway, when we were navigating to Ho Forest, somehow we got lost. We ended up going about 20 miles off track and ended up in what looked like a tree logging operation area. There were a bunch of wide open sections with tree stumps as far as the eye could see. As we were driving through this area, the sun was setting. I don't know exactly when this happened, but off in the distance, 100 to 125 yards, I could see movement off of the left side of the road. Whatever it was, it was moving fast. It was running from the left side of the road to the right side, if that makes sense. At first, I thought it was a bear, once it crossed the road, that was when I got really confused. It was riding on its back legs. I watched it for around 15 seconds before it disappeared into the forest. It had to be running at least 30 miles per hour or more. It might have been a bear, but I don't know if they can run that fast on their hind legs or if they do that at all. When I was a kid, back in 2003-2004-ish, my parents bought a three-acre plot with a house. All of it was wooded for quite a ways around us, except for the little plots near the road where houses were. Back in the woods that I always explored alone and with friends, there was a grove of red pine planted in rows. They looked like they had been intended for telephone poles but were long abandoned. They'd grown oversize, and a few had fallen. That area of the woods was always weirdly silent. It also felt like someone was always watching you. If you darted around the edge of a tree, you might come face to face with someone. Many times, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. More than once, we found animal carcasses in that section, although I chalked it up to just normal wood. I had a dream about that area a few times, and every time I saw this large creature, 8 to 10 feet tall, it was made completely of wood, plants, vines, and rocks. It definitely wasn't human, but it did create some sort of instinctual fear in me. I don't think it meant me any harm, but at the same time, I knew it didn't like me being in its section of woods. Fast forward to 2020, and I've started walking a lot more. Of course, I always choose the wooded paths because they are the most exciting when you live in a city of concrete. Recently on my walks, I've been coming across a growing number of animal carcasses, which is odd considering these are well-traversed paved paths and the carcasses look like they've been there for weeks, but they weren't there the day before and they are gone the next. Normal animal stuff, right? I would think so too if the hair on the back of my neck didn't stand up constantly while I was near the trees. Something is watching me and is so close it could reach out and touch me. So I did what anyone would do, I went somewhere else to walk. But it won't go away. I can feel it near me, hiding in the shadows cast by the leaves. It doesn't want me gone, but it just seems to be watching. And when I begin to feel it, the animal or bird noises around me go silent. Not too long ago, maybe four years ago, I was walking with my family on this trail. We did this often just as a family activity, and this time we decided to walk along a new trail. After we walked for a bit, my father saw some rubble in the distance and said we should go check it out. We walked up to it, and they appeared to be stone buildings, very decayed and barely intact, just half of one of each wall was standing, enough to tell what the building could have been, but then off in the distance, a little bit, I noticed a staircase, same type of stone, however completely different. This staircase looked as though it hadn't aged at all. Completely disregarding this, I stepped on them and walked up to the top. I looked around and saw nothing else. I asked my father to come up, but he said I should come down. Then I remember being filled with a weird feeling of dread mixed with feeling lost. I came down, and then we walked a little bit more before leaving. A couple weeks ago, I mentioned this to my friends, and they insisted we go check it out. I brought them to the ruins, and they were gone. I know I went to the exact spot, but it's like they never existed. This has been nothing to me, so I know I'm not crazy. 
We had driven a few miles down a dirt road to another trailhead in Olympic National Park in Washington State in the U.S. There was no one else around. Less than five minutes after we start out, we hear a male and female having a conversation, with the female laughing loudly. They sounded so close, like we were about to come face to face right after the bend in the trail. We rounded the bend, then silenced. There was absolutely no sign of other people. As we walked deeper into the woods, the trail became so washed out that we could barely see it. At certain spots, we would lose all sound, we couldn't hear each other even though we were within 5 feet. We were losing light fast. There was no way we'd make it to the lake before dark. We only had one light, two. We turned back. On the way back, I heard the man farther away making noises. Then crunching branches the bush on the sides of the trail was so thick that there was no way anything could get through it except maybe a moose. The female started laughing again, first on my left side, then right, at drastically different distances. Then she was directly behind me. I knew she was right there, but I couldn't see her. Larger branches were being crushed on both sides. At this point, we felt pretty dumb for not even having a knife and started to run back to the car. We'd yell at each other and couldn't hear each other at all. The whole time, the voices were all around us, laughing and mocking. I grew up in the woods and have a small, backwoods family I'm not really in touch with anymore since I've grown up. That's not to say they didn't terrorize me until I moved out. The moment that is still clear all the years later is my brush with wood anxiety. I was maybe 14 years old, and my older brother and stepdad at the time were trying to convince me to go coon hunting. I really didn't want to, but they were so persistent that everyone in the family did, but I was adamant on not going. For those that don't know, this kind of hunting usually happens at night, well, it was late, around 9 at night, and I was curling up for sleep. When lo and behold, both of them busted into my room, scooped me up, and basically strapped me to the back of the family ATV. Off into the dark night we went, yelling and crying because dot one, the woods were terrified during the day, but it was pitch black. Two, I was being forced. About two miles into the murky woods, they said this is the spot they always hunt at and pushed me off to set up camp. I begrudgingly got off since I couldn't fight anymore since we were here, and I turned around to ask for a flashlight and the gear to see both laughing. I asked what was so funny, and they both just took off on the four-wheeler into the night. It gets really blurry after this part, but the dread of seeing the tail lights getting smaller and smaller as the night closes in on me. I was full of freaks, I couldn't see because the trees were blocking the moon. The next thing I'm doing is just running. I don't know what direction I just took off, thinking if I stayed still, I'd surely be eaten alive by whatever was out here. I eventually come to what was commonly referred to as the line, which is a big break in the tree line where power lines are. That was about a mile away from my original position there. I just collapsed because I could see the moon. I was in the light. I felt safe. I immediately fell asleep. I woke either a few hours or minutes later, I had no way to tell. But it was just as dark. I eventually made my way down the line until I found a dirt road that led to the closest town. From there, I walked home. I was with two of my friends last evening, and we decided to go in the forest because it was really pretty and it wasn't that dark due to the snow. We were walking to a field, and then on the road, when I wanted to say something, I heard a whisper from behind with a female voice that said shut up, shut up twice. I turned to my friend and asked her why I should shut up, and she looked confused. We got to the field, and were just casually talking, and I heard it again, quietly saying run, and then had this vision of a horde of witches coming from the same direction we came from. I didn't say anything, and we just stayed there, and after like 20 to 30 minutes, we left because it was getting cold. I'm a 27-year-old woman. My boyfriend and I were able to purchase 15 acres of land this year, right next to a national forest in the Carolinas. It has always been my dream to live in a forest on a mountain, and we were so excited when we found the land. It was priced so low and is a 5-minute drive from the lake, so we of course grabbed it up as fast as we could get the loan approved. We put a small mobile home in the middle of the property where we currently live, while we have our home built about 3 acres away. We moved onto the land in late May, and everything seemed great. A few weeks ago, I started taking my two dogs out for walks around the forest to check where the property lines were and also just to enjoy the scenery, which is truly beautiful. We got to where the property line ended and the national forest began, and I wanted to go further in as I knew there was a trail you could take nearby that leads to the top of the mountain and a rest area where I planned to call my boyfriend and have him come get me and the dogs. The actual hike itself might take about 1.5 hours, and there is a road the rangers take to get to the top that he could drive up. We were about halfway to the trail, or so I thought, when my German shepherd crush took off into the woods, barking. He's usually very well trained and comes when called, 
but he was hellbent on chasing something. Luckily, my other dog isn't as excitable, and she stayed by me. We went deeper into the forest, looking for my dog, when I heard what I thought was a wild boar. If you have never heard of a boar, imagine what you assume a demon crawling out of hell sounds like, and that's pretty much it. I got nervous as I knew a boar could easily gut my dog with their tusk and started yelling out for Crush to come. I could hear him barking angrily, and we made our way to where the sounds were coming from. I found him looking up, barking, and snarling near a large tree. I tried to pull him away, but he wouldn't budge. I had to literally pick up this 80-pound dog and shuffle carry him about 100 feet away from where I set him down. My other dog stayed by the tree whining, her tail in between her legs. I called for her to come to me, and she did a 180 and took off in the other direction. I looked up in the tree but couldn't really see much, so I just chalked it up to one big-ass raccoon. It took about two hours, but I was finally back on my land with the dogs. I told my boyfriend about it when we got home, and he recommended not taking them out too far without leashes as to avoid this again. When I asked him what he thought it was, he agreed that it was either an opossum or a raccoon, but I told him it didn't explain the boar sound. He just said, it's the woods, there's a lot of animals and left it at that. A few days later, I was working from home when my dog started going nuts. Crush started snarling and jumping up at the window. I yelled for them to stop barking, and since I had to make a call, I let the dogs out with the intention of bringing them back in afterwards. It took all of 10 minutes. When I opened the door, my little dog was sitting on the porch and bolted inside. Crush was gone. I stepped out and started calling for him, scanning the woods for a big, furry black butt. I couldn't see or hear him, so I started into the woods, calling for him. I made my way to where the house was being built, and he was standing by the right-hand side of it. I called for him, but he stood there frozen, ignoring me, so I walked over to him when I saw what he was staring at. It was very large, and on all fours, I don't know what it was. At first, my initial thought was a manged, hairless bear because of its size, but there aren't bears in that forest. I double-checked before we moved in because I was worried about the dogs getting into it with one. It was also lean, so I know it wasn't a bear, as it was too thin to be healthy enough to walk. There was fur or hair, but only on the back, and it was either dark brown or black. I couldn't see a face, but I could tell it did not have an animal snout. I grabbed Crush's collar and tried to tug him towards the construction, trying not to make any sudden movements. I felt the thing watching me as I led Crush into the middle of the concrete, I didn't take my eyes off it. It was about 10 yards away when I heard the boar noise again, it was coming from it. Crush started barking and jumping towards it, with me attached to him via collar. I just said, duck that jerked Crush back towards me and started running back towards the mobile home. I slammed the door, locking it behind me, and grabbed my gun. I called my boyfriend a few times before he answered and started yelling at him to come home. There is something on the property. He was home in 10 minutes and took his truck over to the construction site. When he got back, he said he didn't see anything. It's been a couple weeks since then, and this past weekend I saw it again. My boyfriend had to work late, so I was home with the dogs watching TV when my little one scratched at the door to be let out to potty. Crush followed her out, and I left them to do their business. When I opened the door, the little one was shaking and couldn't get in fast enough. She hid under the dining table and refused to come out. I called out for Crush and couldn't see him, as he's a black dog in the woods at night. I grabbed the flashlight and walked the perimeter of the house looking for him. I saw a big, furry black butt at the back of the house where the tree line began and called for him. He didn't move. I started towards him when I heard a bark from behind me. I felt my heart and stomach drop. I wanted to cry because I knew what I was looking at, and it wasn't my dog, he was behind me. I felt this overwhelming feeling of fear and dread. I was about 5 feet away when that thing leapt up and into the woods. Luckily, my moment of insanity was over and my dumb ass didn't chase it into the woods. I started heading back towards Crush and the house when I heard the boar noises again. They weren't just behind me but all around the woods. I told my boyfriend that he thought I was seeing things. I called my dad, who told me to burn sage on the property and have a shaman come and bless the land, as he thinks it's a skinwalker, he's Blackfoot. This happened to my husband and me. Way out in the middle of nowhere, accessible only by dirt road, there is an area where people go to swim or camp. We used to just hit dirt roads for hours and sometimes take a trail or two, National Forest Recreational Area, lots of ATVs. One night, we stopped at an area that we had been to many times before to build a fire and just hang out. We heard a few noises but didn't think much of them at first. Small branches snapping, leaves crunching, things like that. Normal noises we were used to hearing in the woods, usually an opossum or other small animal. Then we both started to feel watched. 
You could tell the moment we both realized we were only hearing noise from one area and that whatever it was, it was coming towards us. We both moved to the opposite side of the fire to try to see. Any time we looked at the noise, it would stop. Without words, we both headed for the jeep at the same time. We sat there for another hour waiting for our tiny fire to go out, thankfully it started raining, then we hightailed it out of there. We still have no idea who was watching us that night. Neither of us have ever felt so terrified in the woods. We both love camping and being in the woods at night. Living in a small town and knowing several other people that frequent that area, we started asking around. It turns out we aren't the only ones who have had an experience like that in that exact same spot. We don't go there in the dark anymore. I worked as a camp counselor during my college summers, several years before stories of things like skinwalkers became culturally commonplace, certainly before I'd heard of them, and one year we had a night hike activity with story stations. My station had me by myself up on a cliff that overlooked the river, about halfway through the hike. The program staff and storytellers would get a notice to turn off our radios before the first group started the trail. After that, it was dead silence in the dark woods until the first group got there. Since I was fairly far through, it would usually be 15 to 20 minutes before the first group of kids came through. One night I'm up there, waiting, on this steep cliff about 2 feet behind where I was sitting, and I hear this kid's voice from what sounded like about 10 feet behind me saying my name, clear as day. Now, it might not seem all that strange to hear a kid say your name at a camp, even when you think you're alone, but it's important to note here that we use nicknames for safety reasons, and there was not a single child on the 200-acre camp property who actually knew my first name. The staff did, but they were all at least 50 yards away, and this was very much a child's voice. It was also coming from what should have been mid-air. It scared me so bad that I had to leave my station and set up closer to the next one so I could at least talk to her in the darkness. Over the course of the summer, almost all of the program staff had similar experiences on those night hikes, until we finally scrapped the activity because nobody wanted to be out in the woods alone without radios anymore. So I'm hunting a fairly large forest somewhere in the northeastern corridor of the US. It's not uncommon to run into other people at the edges of the woods, it's fairly uncommon to run into people in the middle of the woods, even during hunting season, unless you're on the trails, which I wasn't. I happened to be hunting a new valley, and I was pretty sure I had a crossing in it, so, to set the view, I'm sitting on the top of a very steep shale slide looking down into a valley with a creek running through it. Approaching this plateau, there's a knife edge that runs up and down the ridge, but there's really no way to get up to this spot except for the seriously determined, the drunk, and the foolish without walking up or down the edge. I've been up here for about three hours glassing this little piss of a stream, looking for something to cross it and seeing nothing but squirrels and birds, and I finally decided to start glassing the opposite hill out of sheer boredom. I am 90% sure I chose a poor spot and wasted an afternoon looking at nothing. Such is hunting. As I'm screwing around with the focus on the binoculars, I catch a glimpse of something that almost looks like a person if they were wearing dark blue clothes and about 4 feet tall. This person wasn't moving, it was just standing there, behind the cover of some low scrub brush and tree branches, and I would have missed it were it not for the color. I zoom out a bit and realize I'm not looking at a person, but it's actually a collapsed cabin, and I was looking at where the door would be. Except it really looked like a person. And cabins aren't blue. I move the zoom back onto the door and play with the focus for about 5 minutes, and I can't get the person to come back. In fact, the cabin door now has some light from the setting sun visible through the holes in the walls and roof. Whatever 4 foot tall thing I was looking at has moved. Sigh. Teenagers, right? I have that thought and then realize something else. I can still hear birds, squirrels, and all the other things in the woods, which typically go quiet when they notice something. Which means that they didn't notice me, but that also means they didn't notice whatever was in the cabin door a short time ago. I'm doing my best to stay quiet and not move, and whatever it was certainly did move. I would expect everything in the woods to have gone for cover with a teenager crashing through the brush, but the noises almost made it worse. There was stuff moving in the brush. I started to think it was a trick of the light since the sun was setting and it was getting to the part of the day when tree stumps looked like deer. I knew I would have to move soon and figured I might as well pack it up since I still had to get down off the shale and back to the pine tree where I had planned to throw a tarp and sleep. At this time, I realized it wasn't dark per se, but it was overcast now. About this time, fog rolled into the valley, and the combination of overcast weather conditions, a sunset, and a ground fog coming up in the wet, low valley signaled it was time to leave. I checked my safety, put the caps on my glass, and reached up to take down my orange flag. The moment I grabbed the flag, the dread came. That's the only way to describe it, the woods went from animals going home to sleep to full on your duct. The movement had attracted what I could only describe as a thousand invisible eyes, 
which all turned in unison as they noticed me. Even wonder what a deer feels in the headlights? This is it. Then I heard children. I heard children laughing. Not teenagers. Not adults. Not women. But full of five-year-old kids laughing like they caught a firefly. I had hiked five miles the previous day through the woods and put down two more today when I woke up to get to this spot, and I distinctly heard children laughing during what I could only describe as the most creepy moment I've ever had in a valley I know is completely unoccupied having stared at it for the last four hours or so. I am pretty sure my feet only touched the shale three times getting down from the knife edge, and I made a ton of noise doing it too. At this point, I didn't really care. I grabbed the pack and my flashlight and absolutely rucked it to the next hilltop. I killed my light halfway up the hill and then went to the top of the hill, where I threw down the tarp and unrolled my foam, and there I sat all night watching the hill I just came from. While hiking in Switzerland, I decided to see Matterhorn, the famous mountain, up close, as close as I could. So I left the village I was staying in early, Sermat, and walked through meadows, hills, and then up the mountains to reach the plateau. Early in the morning, after just leaving the town, I walked the straight path, passing some houses on the left, the town behind, a mountain ahead, and a forest on the right. In front of the forest, there were a few curious old huts on long legs, ones you climbed to by a ladder. They were all made of round planks and soot black. My imagination immediately called them witch huts, relating them to movies and legends I knew. They seemed closed, and I couldn't get into any of them, but I felt a slight shiver of excitement and didn't really want to get in. So I kept on walking. I saw the mountain, met some people, had lunch, and in the afternoon decided to walk back to town. I remembered the way and backtracked pretty much exactly. On my way back, the mountain was behind me, town ahead, houses and meadows on the right, and black, spooky huts on the left, guiding the entrance, a path, leading into the forest. I should note that despite checking out the huts in the morning, I didn't notice there was a forest path starting behind them. Curious about it, I checked the wooden road signs placed in the vicinity of the huts. To my surprise, the one pointing into the woods said Sermat. But the one pointing to where I originally came from in the morning said some other town's names. I was very confused. I looked back and looked again, thinking that maybe my brain was tricking me, but I kept seeing what I saw. I stood there while a few hikers passed in each direction, all stayed on the main path, nobody went into the forest or looked at the road signs. I sat there in front of the huts and smoked a cigarette. I wondered whether I should go into the forest and why the signs showed such weird directions. I wondered if there was a reason I should go in. But I was already very tired, to the point of and he just laughed at the idea of paranormal entities trying to lure me into the forest. I did have a creepy feeling about the huts, but at the same time, it was a beautiful day, and I still wonder whether there was some kind of adventure awaiting me if I took the forest path. I have not been able to stop thinking about this experience since it happened about 10 years ago. I have never felt anything like it. Myself and two friends went for a walk in our local forest. I tend to walk fast, so I walked ahead of my two friends. I got to a certain part of the forest, and, literally, from nowhere, I was struck with the most overwhelming feeling of terror. It was so strong that it literally stopped me mid-stride. I froze and could not move. I was terrified. There was nothing, and nobody else was around. Then I get what can only be described as a certainty in my head, it wouldn't be accurate to call it a voice, but rather an overwhelmingly strong knowing, that I needed to look to my left. I did that. There was still no one and nothing there, except for a big crack in the side of the rock face that basically made for a small cave. Whatever it was, I knew it was in that cave, but, physically, there was nothing to be seen. I am not easily freaked out. I can't impress on you how utterly terrified I was. And this was in the middle of the afternoon. As I stood there, unable to move, one of my friends walked nonchalantly around the corner and immediately. Without me even having a chance to look at her or try to move, she stops dead in her tracks and says, whoa, bad energy off that cave. I try to stumble out some explanation of how I am feeling, but I can't. The brain literally scrambled from fear. A minute later, our male friend appears. Both of us women start trying to explain to him what has happened because he literally feels nothing. He approaches the cave to look in, and we two grown women are begging him not to get too close to it. I was actually on the verge of tears. But he feels absolutely nothing. He takes a look inside and reckons we're just both being a bit hysterical. It was the weirdest thing. Whatever was in there was just gone in an instant the second he appeared. I've always had an uncanny feeling that whatever it was did not intend to harm us. It just wanted us to know that we needed to back the duck away from that area and that it was willing to harm us if it needed to. Oddly, I have such a clear image in my head of the spot where this happened, and I know that forest like the back of my hand. Over the past 10 years, 
I have looked for that cave in that rock face many times. I have never been able to find it. I lived in West Germany for eight years as a child. My parents, my younger sister, and I went all over the country exploring. Hiking through the woods, taking boat rides down the Rhine. We went on a hiking trail through the Black Forest. This was a one-day loop trail. We had stopped for a rest, my parents were sitting and talking with a Canadian family, my sister was in her stroller, and I was playing in the dirt just off the path. More than anything else, I remember how peaceful everything was. I cannot describe the immeasurable peace I felt, the absolute stillness of the woods was almost a physical presence. For some reason, I was so overcome with it that I decided to walk into the woods. I don't know how far I walked, but I was lost almost immediately. I could sort of hear the sound of people talking from the rest stop, but I had no idea which direction it was coming from, filtered through the trees. The odd thing, though, is that I wasn't afraid at all. I still felt that immeasurable peace. I don't know how long I walked, but it felt like hours. Then I saw her. I say her because, even without identifying sexual characteristics, the practice was overwhelmingly feminine. She was a person, but not a her skin was like skin, but also like bark. Like twisted twigs and branches woven together. Her hair was moss green, fuzzy, and short. No mouth, no nose. Her eyes were huge and oval. Yellowish orange iris with a tiny black pupil. They took up most of the face. She led me back to the trail, about 20 meters away from the rest stop. I say led, but that's not really it. We moved through the forest without moving, I still can't wrap my head around it years later. She let go of my hand and put her finger to her face as if making a, shh, gesture, and then she was gone. My parents were just packing up my sister when I walked to the rest stop. I thought I had been gone for hours, but it had only been about 20 to 30 minutes. They had thought I walked up the trail a bit and then came back. I dream about what happened occasionally, and it leaves a haunting longing in my heart that I don't understand. My grandpa was always a big hunter. It's not uncommon here in the Midwest. He would always find new areas to hunt and get permission to hunt on private properties. So one day he and his buddy got permission to go on this private land, which I believe was around 100 acres total. I don't recall the specifics of exactly where the forest was, but if this opens a can of worms, I'll ask for specifics. For now, I know for a fact that this was in the Michigan slash Indiana border area, or, in other words, Michiana. Anyway, they set out around noon to get to the forest, arrived around 1 p.m., and started hiking back in the woods. They each had their own tree stands or blinds set up prior, so they made their way to them. I remember my grandpa telling me they hiked a few miles back, so they had to have been deep in the forest. As the day goes on, they don't see any deer, so once the sun began to set, they decided to start making their way back to the truck and met up near my grandpa's tree stand or blind. So this is where the weird stuff happens. They are making their way back, and the sun has completely set. Luckily, they brought flashlights for the walk back because they had to walk a few miles in the pitch black. So they finally have about a mile left of hiking left when they see something crouched in front of them with their backs turned to them. My grandpa and his friend stopped dead in their tracks, staring at this random dude in the woods at night. My grandpa described him as a bald white guy with a black and white striped shirt. My grandpa's friend speaks up after a moment that I can only imagine is a WTF is this feeling and asks what he's doing out there, and without a word, the man stands up and faces them, staring, and then levitates up towards the trees and just disappears. After that, they sprinted to the truck and never went back to that land again. Me and my friend drive around a lot during the night, she likes driving, and I like sitting in the car. During our trips, we found many weird roads in the woods, most of them are old roads to farms, but it's not the roads that are weird, it's the trees in the woods. On more than six to nine occasions, we've seen an otherwise dark forest lit up, sort of like exposing a path into the forest and an irresistible urge to get out of the car and step on this road. Since we both tend to sense certain things in our everyday lives, we've not been very keen to explore these roads, and I hope we never will. We've checked these spots, we mark them in an app sometimes, when we don't exactly know where we are, in daylight, but there's never a specific road, just trees. Of course, we've considered things like car headlights, bending lights, moonlight, nearby houses, etc., but it's that horrifying feeling or emotion we experience when we see those roads that keeps us haunted. Recently, we were driving near towns and suburbs where houses were built near a wilderness preserve. There's a cemetery on the other side and a river across it. I've never liked this place anyway, I've never been near it either. But that night, some sections near the road just lit up. We honestly thought someone was coming through the trees, some jogger or hiker, but no one was there. At the same time, 
someone was very interested in us going there, I swear we could hear whispers, even though we were listening to Brittany and Cher very loudly to lessen the initial scare effect. Our navigation app stopped working, and when we tried to get out of there, all of the small streets led back to that forest. And around that time, someone was laughing very hard at us, until I got pissed, opened the window, and yelled back at him. The next moment, our app starts working, and we find out we are less than a minute away from the main road. This happened a few years ago. I used to live in a very peaceful and quiet neighborhood next to this huge forest. It was maybe 4 to 5 AM, I work in 3 shifts and had woken up at 5 PM after my night shift, when I went out with my dog. I'm afraid to walk alone at night, but my dog is big and trained to protect me, so I feel safe with her. We went next to the woods, and I let my dog run around free. There is this open grassy football field where I could see if someone was approaching us, and in case there were another dog, I could quickly call my dog near me. I was standing maybe 10 meters from the woods, and suddenly my dog runs between me and the woods and starts to growl. I have never seen her so angry or afraid. I didn't hear any footsteps or anything, and I bet I would have since the ground is full of branches because of the trees growing there. I started to walk away from the forest to the open area and called my dog to come, but she didn't move at all. I whistled at her, a bit irritated because I was scared and just wanted to go home, then something answered me. Something was whistling from the woods, exactly the same pitch. There was maybe three seconds of silence between every whistle. I started to back up and shouted to my dog come. And this something started to repeat come in the same pitch and in my voice. I'm female, and I have a high voice. I first thought it was echo, but in each word, the sound went to an even lower pitch, and the last sound was only very low growling. At this point, I ran to my dog, took her off the leash, and started running. The sound seemed to be following us. I looked behind, and there was nothing, but my dog ran head bent to look behind and definitely tried to bite something behind her. The sound went above us and stopped. This wasn't just in my head because my dog was following this sound too and looking in its direction. Suddenly, it was quiet. I ran home, and after the worst panic was over, I went to sleep. The next morning, I told my boyfriend what happened, and he said I was crazy or imagining things. My dog is still very tense if we go to that place. I'm afraid too. What could this thing be? I was fortunate enough to grow up on a lovely little, secluded piece of land in Canada. I had a large house that was backed by beautiful forests and woodland. I spent a lot of time in and around that forest and grew to love it and know it like the back of my hand. My family is not very spiritual. My dad was an atheist, and my mother was a very casual Catholic. Despite this, dad didn't like going too deep into the forest, and mom did much the same. They said they got funny vibes from it, some gut instinct, I guess. They didn't have a problem with me and Gabe going in the forest, as long as we were sensible, were together, and didn't go too deep. There were some nights where I would be woken up by blue flashes coming through my window, as if someone taped cellophane over a flashlight and was sporadically turning it off and on from above the canopy deep in the woods. Other nights, if the wind carried just right, you could hear voices in the dead of night, sometimes conversation, sometimes wailing or shouting, and other times whispers. Sometimes all three. I couldn't really hear what was being said. The woods stretched out for kilometers and, to my knowledge, were uninhabited where the lights and noises came from. On one particular occasion, I guess this activity climaxed. I was about 14. Me and Gabe wandered further than we ever had. We reached a point, and it was like something snapped, I guess. Hard to describe. It was like the feeling you get when you break something and know you're about to be caught. We turned back pretty quickly. I think something followed us out of those woods. A few hours later, I was reading in the living room, which had a big glass sliding door that faced the backyard and trees. I noticed movement out of the corner of my eye. A humanoid dude, probably six feet tall, was beckoning me from the tree line. He had wild, untamed hair, sickly, hairless skin, and didn't appear clothed. He just kept beckoning with this awkward, stiff movement of his arm. There was something totally off about him. I screeched for my dad, and when I did, the guy walked behind the nearest tree and just disappeared out of sight. I explained to my dad what I saw, who looked outside but found nothing. He told me I probably imagined something from my book. I definitely did not. When I was 16, a group of my friends talked me into going ghost hunting in nearby towns or locations. At the time, I was really into the dramatization of ghost hunting, like ghost hunters, ghost adventures, etc., all the while being on the fence between skeptic and believer, open to the idea but never had solid proof. Naturally, I was all for it, and so, of course, in true teenage fashion, I lied to my parents and decided to have a sleepover at my friend's place. 
we ended up going to a place next to an accused which is grave and wondering about it for a good while until we got to the forest. Now this forest had a few rules for going in, based on what my friends told me. I think if you heard two snaps of twigs, you were good to go in, however, if you heard one or nothing, by no means were you supposed to go in on the risk of being chased out by the spirit or whatever is residing within. While each of us was taking turns listening for responses, my eyes were drawn to the trees, and I saw something that was very weird, and it was the outline of a human? Shape. I say outline because I distinctly remember saying it looks like the predator to myself because it appeared with faintly glowing eyes. I figured it was my eyes playing tricks on me, but I keep coming back to it on occasion and rethinking it over and over again, but it was just so strange. We had a friend get the offer to go in, but they ended up being scared to go in alone. I ended up hearing a snap of twigs and wished to respect it.